Okay, on to uh, the second day of notes for other functions. So I picked one question from each section, just like I did for the last notes. And here it says graph the following function. So here's our function. It's a quadratic because it's degree 2. Using the given table of values of the function. So you don't have to type this in the calculator. They gave you the table and it says you have to plot at least five points. So based on what you have down here for a grid, a 10 by 10 grid, I would plot the points that fit. So negative 7, negative 3, negative 6, 3, negative 5, 5. If you were to type this, maybe negative 3, 3, there's 5. And if you were to type this in your calculator, you would see that the table does indeed match. So starting at 0, here's negative 45, 1, negative 67, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's plot these five points. And you may not get that U-shaped curve. Okay, if you wanted to see the U-shape, hit graph. And we could see it here. It's upside down, which it should be because we have the negative number out front. Okay, so let's plot these five points. We'll do that in black. Negative 7, 3. Negative 7, 1, 2, 3. Negative, or I'm sorry, that's negative 7, negative 3. Watch out for that. And um, if you're done plotting points, you click that button, and then if you um, want to delete a point, I used white out, but then you click a point to delete it. So negative 7, down 3. Negative 6, up 3. Negative 5, 5. And negative 4, 3. And 3, or negative 3, negative 3. Okay, and there's our U-shaped curve. So once again, um, using the given table, you didn't have to type that into the calculator. Now, number two, it says use technology. So that means using your calculator, which don't forget there is one on Delta Math. So we're going to go Y equals, and we can see X is here in the exponent, so this is exponential. So 2 to the X graph, we can see what the exponential function looks like, and let's go to a table of values, the so second table. And you don't have to write these down, but we need to plot five points. So I'm going to do 0, 1 for sure. So there's one point that will fit, 1, 2, so 1, 2, 2, 4, so 2, 4, 3, 8, 3, 8, and 4 sixteens off, but I'm going to do negative 1 and then a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's sketch that curve. Okay, and there's our exponential function. Number 3. Which type of function is shown in the table below? Now I took, okay, you only have one table but I took four tables so that we could take a look at which type of function it is. So remember, linear has a constant rate of change. So if we look at one function, is there one that's increasing by the same amount um, with your change of x over change of y? And that's going to be this one right here. So linear, we see that constant adding so here we're adding for each time, every time we add 1 on this side. Okay, so the constant rate of change is linear. Now exponential is that constant multiplication by a number. Oh, and it looks like I accidentally uh, copied down one table twice. So what I'm going to do... is start with um, 1, 1, and then 3, this one. So I had these numbers so that each time we saw the multiplication of 3. 
okay? So this is times three. Where here you see each number is cut in half. So this is times one half. So the multiplication is exponential. Okay, now this one represents growth because the numbers are getting bigger. Where this one is decay as our y values are decreasing. So as x increases, y is decreasing. So this one would look like this, where this one's going to look like this. Now this function here, we may not have a good idea unless, right, we sketched it out. So I don't see any multiplication or adding. So if I just sketch this function, so I got 1, negative 10 down here, 2, negative 6, 3, 0, 4, 8, and 5, 18. Well, actually, it's best, oh, I can't see my sketch. It's best to do this on graph paper. Okay, so I would have to, so that I'm actually precise, I don't know if I have graph paper handy, but let's take the time to sketch a decent scale. X's are all positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm trying to space them equally. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But this goes up to 18. So let's try to take a look at those four points. So one, negative 10, two, so 10, nine, eight, seven, six, three, zero, four, eight, four, eight. And 518. This looks to me like it is linear. Um, so I actually would have to calculate a slope, okay, because it may not be perfect. So here between these two points, again, slope is rise over run, um, negative 6 minus negative 10 over 2 minus 1 ends up being 4 over 2, which is 2. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, so I calculated the slope of these two points. I'm going to calculate the slope of these two points. It has to be the same in order for it to be linear. So then um, 18 minus 8 over 5 minus 4 ends up being 10 over 1. So it's actually not linear. Okay. So at, with that many points, it's really hard to tell. So I'd have to look at the multiple choice answers that were there and then pick um, one based on it's not linear, it's not exponential. It could be quadratic, okay? So it might be that function. And lastly, if it also had the point, um, just for some examples I saw in Delta Math, to one, right? If you saw something like that where the double x value is repeating, that would be not a function. Okay. All right, example four. Graph the following functions on the axes provided. So let's graph this one first. Okay, so what it's saying is for this interval, so if you wanted to create a table from three to six, three, four, five, six, um, the y value is negative six. So let's plot that. So three, now be careful, um, or I need to watch out. This is an open circle, right, at three, because it doesn't have the equal to versus closed circle for an x value of six. So three negative six is an open circle. Four negative six, closed circle, five negative six, and six negative six. So let's draw the line connecting those, okay? 
And then here we do have an open circle, closed circle. So the table for this one, from negative 4 to 3, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, we have to take the x, make it negative, and then add 2. Or you can go to your calculator, go to y equals, and type it in, negative x plus 2, and look at the table of values. So when x is negative 4, we get 6. So I'm just going to copy those down. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. And remember, we're going to have the, I'll do this in green, open circle at negative 4, and then close circle here. So negative 4, 6, negative 4, 6, open circle. And then I'm going to plot 3, negative 1, so 3, negative 1, close circle. And then I'm going to draw the line. You can plot all the points in between, but since I knew it was linear, I can just plot the first and last point and then connect. And you can see it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So even these two points are stacked, this one's open and that one's closed. Okay. Number five. Transform the solid black function to match the dotted. So this is kind of a guess and check. Okay. So right away, so you want to go from the solid to the dotted. It did not flip upside down, so it'll stay positive. And then shift left and right. And you can play around with this shift on your calculator. But with this um, uh, question in Delta Math, they're allowing you to play around to see what happens. So I'm going to take the square root function. So take the square root of x. And then it's moved left 5. So it went left 5 units. So see if we put plus 5, what happens? It moved left 5. Good. So this number here needs to be a um, plus 5. This number is a 5. All right, so you get to replace that. And then it not only went left 5 units, so it would be there, but it went up 2. So that's outside of the function notation. Go up to and hit graph. And you can see it's in that spot. So then change this number to a 2. But as I said, this is really cool. And that allows you to play with um, this function. It'll move it however, um, what depends on what numbers you put in. It'll move it accordingly. And you just need to keep playing around until you get it to match. And then here, um, you have to highlight or identify the function which represents the dotted graph. So here's the original function. Now to make it go upside down, it must be negative. Now it didn't just go upside down, it went right one. So if I go to the calculator and I do y equals, again you have to go to math, under numbers, absolute value, I want to put a negative in front. So negative math, absolute value of x. And then write 1, that's within the absolute value brackets. Up and down is outside. So write 1, is that plus 1? So let's hit graph. Now it moved it left. So let's change it from a plus inside to a minus. And it did. So I have a graphing calculator. There's also the graphing calculator app, but there's a graphing calculator within Delta Math, so it should be this. And now that I can see that it matches, I can input my answer. Okay, it should have the same symbols as what you see above. So this one's absolute value. If it has square root, it's going to be square root. And then here, okay, graph the following function by moving the green dots. Okay, so the green dots were these. I printed black and white, so I don't have green dots. So I need to move the dots in order to graph it. So this part right here inside is the shift left and right. We just saw with the absolute value that it's opposite. So the negative actually moved it right. The positive is going to move it left 1. And then outside of the function notation, so this plus 5, 
is going to move it up. If it was negative, it would go down. So take every point and go left one up five. So left one up one, two, three, four, five. So I started with this one, I'll move this one. Left one up one, two, three, four, five. Uh, left one up one, two, three, four, five. Take this one, left one up one, two, three, four, five. Take this one, left one up one, two, three, four, five. And I'm only gonna do those as if I move the others, I'm off the graph. Okay, so we can see the vertex went left one up five. And remember your vertex is this point right here, which is also called the turning point. All right, example number eight. So we're gonna take this graph. So here's um, y equals two to the x, right, this function. And we're gonna graph y equals 2 to the x plus 2. So I'll do that in blue. So there's no plus or minus up here to the x, so this just means it's plus 2. So we're just going to take every point and go up to. Okay, if it was um, negative, we would go down. So let's take this point right here and go up 2, this point up 2, this one up two, uh, this one here, up two, take this one here, it's at a half, up two, and you can kind of sketch that in. So there's the exponential function showing growth. Nine and ten. So now we're going to take the square root function and shift it. So within the function notation that's left and right, Outside the function notation, so the notation being square root, is up and down. And I wish there, I actually picked one that had minus. So let's actually change this, cross it out, to minus. So this time we're going to go down 5. And remember the negative 1, we think left, but it's opposite right 1. So take every point, go right 1, down 5. So right 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this point, right one down one, two, three, four, five, right one down one, two, three, four, five, right one down one, two, three, four, five, and we can sketch that in. Okay, so this was y equals the square root of x, and then y equals the square root of x minus one minus five, because I changed it. And then last but not least, um, here we have any quadratic function, it's saying. It's graphed, and the vertex of the parabola is 4, 3. So it's just a point on the parabola. What is the vertex of this function? So within the f of x, so if you're actually taking to the x in the notation and adding 2, that means you're going to go left 2. It's backwards as we set up here, minus right plus left. Okay, and you can play around with that on the calculator. You never have to have it memorized. So here's x squared to finish. And then let's do x plus 2 squared and hit graph. And we should see the parabola move left. There we go. So we're going to go left too. It doesn't say up or down, so the y value is going to stay the same. Okay? So if you picture the point at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, it's right there. And if you move left two units, so 1, 2, it would be right here, so it goes from 4 to 2. So our answer is now 2, 3. Now let's use the same point and do one more. Let's do f of x plus 7 minus, actually let's change that plus, we just did a plus, minus 7 minus 4. So you're going to take, again this is a shift right, right? So we think we want to, if you want to sketch it every time, you can sketch it. So it's 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, so there we are. And this time we're going right, okay, because of this. 
we're going right seven. And then because of this, down four. So right seven, down four. So I'm at, um, right, I'm at four on the x-axis. If I move seven right, that brings me to 11. So my answer is going to have an x value of 11, but then if I go down 4 and I'm at 3, well, if I go down 3, I'm at 0, I'll go down 1 more, I'm at negative 1. So you can just take the y value of 3 and subtract 4, and we get negative 1. Okay? And that finishes the notes for practice 2. Have a good day.